Take a look at this tooth right here. This is actually from the snake that has the longest fangs of any snake out there. And it happens to be a venomous animal. And that thing can sometimes get up to an inch and a half long. And you'll never guess what snake it's from. And of course, the snake responsible for the largest venomous tooth or tooth at all in when it comes to snake is the one that's in this bucket right here. Uh, do the honors there, Bruce. And of course, this is the Gaboon Viper. Take a look at that beauty right there. That is one absolutely wonderful snake. And you definitely have to be careful with these guys because they are extremely springy. There's no doubt about that. But look at the head on that animal right there. Ooh, doggy. I tell you what, these guys are of course native to Sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, wow, Bruce, this is a, is this a boy? This is a boy. This is, is, a boy. is a, his name is actually Bundy. Bundy. Oh yeah, well, I yeah. can understand why. <laughs> so nice. And of course, those teeth aren't the only thing you have to worry about because they have a pretty nasty venom. It's actually a cytotoxin. And the truth is, is that the venom itself isn't unbelievably toxic, but the bites are unbelievably bad because they have the second largest venom yield of any snake just behind the king cobra. So, Bruce, you're working with this, and uh, you're thinking about getting the king cobra. So that's great. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So you know, it's a good addition, you know. Yeah, good addition <laughs> to have both of the animals that have the highest yield of venom of all venomous snakes. I'm gonna put this little monkey down right now and just admire it. Look at the head on that animal. And you can understand why those teeth are so big with the head this long. The thing is, you gotta be careful. As much as I'd love to neck this animal and actually show you the sheathing that they have from the actual teeth, the truth is, is that these guys have been known to bite through the back of their jaw. And that's something that I don't wanna have happen. That's for sure. Again, because they have such a high venom yield, you're looking at all kinds, necrosis, pain, swelling, uh, unconsciousness, heart damage, all kinds of things. This is definitely a very dangerous snake when it comes to bites. But the fact is, is that there's actually very few bites from these guys because they're really from areas where there's not a lot of population, number one, unlike let's say the Russell's Viper that has got a high amount of fatality with bites. The fact is, is these guys are rarely around people. And the other thing is they're very sluggish. So they pretty much just hang out in the rainforest and stuff like this. And this is a West African? Yes, this is a Western African. You can definitely tell especially because you can see right behind the eyes got that one diamond not two yeah. triangles and definitely two triangles and that big big head on East Africa. Oh yeah the East Africans are amazing. Of course they're only a small area in South Africa where the East Africans are typically found where these guys have a much larger range the West Africans but again thankfully very few people get bit. They're lazy they don't really like to strike if they don't have to. The only bites that really typically happen are number one when someone's mucking with them like we are right yeah. now and number two if you're out in the wild and you happen to step on them and they just reactively bite you. But I tell you what, that is an impressive snake. I've always said it's probably one of the prettiest snakes that I've ever seen. Honestly, dude, yeah, every time I see him, like, especially with all the awesome laying that we have here, dude, like, the colors, there's, there's like, of every color you can see. There's golds, yellows, yeah, peaches, the pink, oh, peaches my, and pinks, and, I mean, just, and whites coming through. I mean, that's, it's like someone, it's like an artist drew this animal. I oh, mean, man. it's unbelievable that it's like this in the wild, but it is, and it's an amazing animal, there's no doubt about it. But again, those two-inch hypothermic needles are actually backed by a pressurized venom system, right? So they're actually going to be pressurizing through those hypodermic needles of that tooth that I showed you here earlier. As a matter of fact, if you want, we can give you a little demonstration of it. Back to this tooth. And again, this one's probably only maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe coming up on a little bit like seven eighths of an inch. Imagine this up to twice as long as that. That's what can actually happen. But what I want to do here, ooh, and I just poked myself. Don't want to have venom on. <laughs> Fortunately, I washed this off beforehand because to be totally honest with you, that can happen. You can actually poke yourself with a shedded tooth and if there is any venom in there, you can actually envenomate yourself. Granted, it'd be a super low yield so you don't have to be too concerned about it, but literally, you do have to be a little bit concerned and I did. Fortunately, I just barely poked myself, didn't do anything. Now, what I have is actually a real hypodermic needle here with actually Gatorade in it and you can see what we're going to do is we're going to put it here into the hollow part of the tooth itself and I'm just going to squeeze like this to show you how the venom actually comes out. Ooh, there it is, look at that. Oh, it's just dripping. And you can imagine the venom yield that comes out of this tooth right now. Ooh, man. I tell you, just even looking at that gives me the chills a little bit. And just think about that. That is what's happening here. The second largest yield of any venomous snake. And by the way, also the heaviest bodied venomous snake in Africa. These guys are absolute beasts. And just looking at that, oh, that venom pumping through that tooth like that, 
Oh my gosh, if this was actually venom and that was going into your hand or whatever its prey item is, you can imagine the amount of venom that actually goes in there. So I just thought it was amazing. I was just so happy that Bruce brought in the shed tooth of this Gabby so that we could actually take a look at it, show you, and basically show you how the venom system actually works when it comes to venomous snakes. In particular, the Kaboon Viper, the longest teeth of any venomous snake. And good morning, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is absolutely amazing. I love starting my day with venomous snakes, there's no doubt about it. But listen, you've got to be safe. Don't want to get anyone hurt, and I know I always play as safe as I possibly can. With that being said, can you do me a favor? Go over to reptilearmy.com. Go ahead, join the army, join the movement, be part of the army. It's important to me, and it's important to the education of the hobby. We need you to be our foot soldiers. Go over to reptilearmy.com. Hi, I'm going to collect some clutches today, whether Brian likes it or not. I'm going to start with this first one here. I have a really nice clutch. This is actually a Het Lavender Snow female. So she's just a normal, but carries the genes for the Lavender Snow, uh, and then bred to a Lavender Snow cow male. So we should get Lavender Snows from some of these eggs here. It's a really nice clutch. This is her actual second clutch, and it's a perfect second clutch. So we have lone one, and then two, three, four, five, six beautiful eggs. And you saw, that's not that big of a female. So to throw two perfect clutches, this is a really good year for her. So I'm happy to be setting these guys up. I have to do a little incubator check because we have a whole bunch of babies that are hatching. Some of them we actually cut. Some of them actually hatched on their own. This is absolutely incredible. This is actually a pinstripe female that was bred to a pastel vanilla bamboo spider. And look at that right there. Oh my gosh. This of course is a bamboo vanilla spider ball python that is absolutely ridiculous. And then take a look at this one here. Oh my gosh. That's actually a bamboo vanilla pinstripe. So we've got a couple cool bamboos in here and then just some other stuff. Look at this beautiful vanilla spinner here. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. So a whole bunch of really cool babies. Where are you going little monkey? Get back in here. Oh, get over here too. Oh my gosh. Things are getting out. So anyways, got a couple more clutches that are hatching too that are absolutely stunning. Remember that GHI Mojave bred to the banana GHI? Well, yeah, some of these babies are climbing out. Looks like we have a little super GHI right here. We have a little Mojave here. I'm not exactly sure what this one is here because it looks like a blue-eyed leucistic, but with that breeding, we shouldn't ever get a blue-eyed leucistic because we don't have the blue eye or the Mojave have a gene on both sides of the gene, right? So we shouldn't ever get this. So I'm a little bit unsure what that is, but I was super happy about this one right here. This of course is the banana GHI Mojave. That was the one I was really shooting for. And oh my goodness gracious, am I excited about it. And when I get these back, I'll do some better shots back at the shop. I'm just doing a little quick incubator update before I head back to work. The last clutch I actually had shot was actually just a normal ball python that was bred to a banana fire spinner blast. So just have a whole bunch of different stuff here. We have have a little fire banana spinner blast right here. We have a little banana spinner right here, which of course is just a banana a pinstripe and a spider. We have a little, which looks to be just like a banana spider, but it could be a banana fire spider too. So just a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Oh, we got a snake that's almost getting out over here. So regardless, just a little tails from the incubator. Uh, let's get these babies over to the shop and we'll give you guys a little bit better view of what they actually are. And we still have a ton of stuff hatching out. We're gonna bathe Jay and Drogo because there is a whole lot of stink going on over <laughs> oh, great. Ready, buddy? <laughs> He's like doing backstrokes. Yeah. We kind of almost have like a down to a science. Yeah, yeah we've done it enough to where we figured out what not to do at least. <laughs> oh my god, look at you. I love you so much. Lori? 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 Here we go. Sloth love water. Love it on your head. Do you love it on your head? It's just a little bit of coconut oil, just to help with the dryness. So the fur will stay nice and soft, and not super itchy. You want to brush by yourself? Bath is successful. Now we just have to figure out how to get him back inside because he's not very happy right now. So he loves me though. Yeah, I think maybe we're gonna spend a little bit more outside time and. Uh, before we put of course, the Gaboon Viper has the largest teeth of any venomous snake, but Carl, not 
this particular snake, but this snake named Carl is an emerald tree boa and it has the largest teeth of any non-venomous snake. Now they both have different kind of reasonings, but the same thing, right? Basically what you have hanging up in the tree up here, when a bird flies by, you're gonna have to strike it, you're gonna have to grab it, and you're gonna have to hang on, it's gonna have to be quick, or you're not getting a meal. So they use those long teeth really to kind of get a hold of their prey. Not to mention when you think of a fluffy bird, there's a lot of feathers there. It's gotta go through those feathers and actually grab onto the animal in order to hang on to it. When it comes to the Gaboon Viper, they actually do the similar thing. They hang on to their prey with those big teeth. Now that's what's interesting compared to a lot of venomous snakes that bite and let go. The Gaboon Vipers actually bite and hang on so that the prey doesn't get away. And that's the reason why they have the second largest venom yield of any snake is because as they're hanging on, they're just pumping venom in. And the same thing goes with Carl. He's just hanging on to actually be able to constrict his prey so that he gets a meal. In both cases, it's evolution so that the snakes can get their meals, right? So that their species can survive. And this guy is an absolute beauty too. I'm gonna continue to update you guys on the building out of the Reptarium 3.0, 4.0 aquarium and stuff like that. We got some new renditions of the architecture with the actual build out going this way. And uh, then some things change. Some things I like, some things I don't like as much. Right up here is actually the first front elevation, which I really do like. But with pushing things out, we're able to change the flow of the windows. Now here is the second rendition right over here. Now I really love the windows on the left side. The building look absolutely incredible, but I kind of like the big windows in the center from the first rendition. Let me know what you guys like, which one you like more, if you want to do a combination thereof, so on like that. I'll continue to keep you guys updated on this process. We're still a long way off, guys, and we still need to raise a lot of money to get this project done. I'm going to be putting pretty much every penny I have into this, and I'm still going to be short quite a bit. As a matter of fact, I wanted to ask you a question. I'm not a huge guy about crowdfunding and going like, I need help with things like that, because you know, hey, it's my business and all like that, but I wanted to know, would you guys mind if I did some crowdfunding? What I was thinking is like, we could maybe do a crowdfunding for say the Stingray tank. We could do crowdfunding for the Shark tank or the Jelly tank or whatever. That way, whatever you're interested in, you could donate to if you want to. Or is that just, you know, should I just somehow muster up the money and figure it out on my own? Again, I'm not big on begging for money from people, but you guys think it's okay to crowdfund? And if you do, would you guys support it? I don't know, I just need your advice. If you guys think it's not a good idea, then we won't even do it at all. But I do wanna know what you guys think. So let me know down in the comments. Woo! Woohoo! I tell you what, someone's in a bad mood today. This is Khalifa, of course, the mangrove snake. And this is a mildly venomous snake. Again, I've been envenomated by these guys a couple times and no really severe things. But my point is, is that I don't ever want to encourage people to be kind of hot dogging around when it comes to venomous snakes. You know, again, even with something as mildly venomous as this, you should really be really careful. I don't want to ever get bit if I can avoid it, that's for sure. But even though we mess with venomous snakes here and we've certainly worked with them for many, many years, Bruce keeps a bunch. I've been working since I was 15 years old. And there are a lot of really good YouTube accounts that really are great at handling venomous snakes. I mean, just real pros and stuff like that. But even though they understand how to handle a King Cobra, maybe even without a, even maybe without a hook or anything like that, the truth is, is that let them do it because they're the experts. We never want people to think that you should pick up a Gaboon Viper or a Cobra or anything like that because they can be amazing animals. But at the same time, the penalty if you get bit isn't just for you, it's for the entire hobby, right? So always be careful. That doesn't mean that you can't one day aspire to really mess with venomous snakes and be really good at it. But the fact is, is don't cowboy it up. Don't watch somebody and think, oh, now I can actually handle a venomous snake just like they can. Because it's taken years and years and years of experience for all the people you see handling venomous snakes to actually do it safely without getting bit. And even then, sometimes there's mistakes that happen. With this guy, if a mistake happens, nothing really severe happens to me. But with a cobra or a gaboon viper, it could be really serious. Not just for me, but we don't want the high hobby to go through that type of thing. So just be very careful out there. And if you do become a venomous expert, they truly are amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I tell you what, it was crazy to see the size of that tooth and the way it actually works, isn't it? If you did enjoy this, here's a playlist of me holding a bunch of big crazy stuff. On this side, you can do me a favor, hit that subscription button. It means the world to me. It really truly does have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you in the next one.